In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a bass and a kick drum to cut through in a mix on small speakers, just like the phones that we listen to every single day, just like some smaller headphones that we use a lot. You know, in a studio, the speakers that we use, or even you may have a subwoofer connected, those speakers are supposed to push out a broad range of frequencies from the top end to the bottom end and everything in between. But when people go to listen on their phones, the speakers aren't pushing out the full range of frequencies are more of like a mid and high sort of frequency uh, push by a phone. But I'm going to show you what I do to help get the bass and the kick drum to cut through even on smaller speakers like this. Before we jump in, I have a free gift for you. It is called the Industry Standard Productions Chorus, seven steps to level up your production in no time. You just go there. It's completely free. Listen to it, go through it, and I hope it helps you, and I hope it gives you a whole lot of value in your music production career. So I'm going to show you today on a rap beat, but the principles still work on pretty much any genre that has bass and kick that you want to cut through a mix. Um, the principles are we're going to put saturation and we're going to put harmonics on them in order to help them stand out and give some more information on the mid and top end frequencies to help cut through a dense mix on small speakers. So here's the rap instrumental and what we have here is just a quick little melody intro and then the drums come in. Um, it's a cool little trick I did is change the melody when the drums come in to a different key just to change it up, try something. But I'll let the beat play and after the beat plays for a little bit, we'll jump in to see exactly what's happening with the kick and in this case it's the 808, but what we're doing is uh, adjusting the bass frequency. So we'll call it bass, we'll call it 808, just that low frequency area. Alright, so you can see that we have the kick and the 808 slash bass that comes in when the drums come in. What we see over here is that we have a BPB saturator, which is a bedroom producer's plugin called Saturator. And it is a free plugin. You go and download it now. And this is what it looks like. And this is my exact settings I'm using just on the kick drum. So we have a kick on this first channel. So what we could do is isolate it here. Let's see what it sounds like. So that's the settings I'm using. I mean, you could tweak it as much as you want. And what I'm doing as well is pulling the output down to actually match the gain as if the plugin was not on. So you could clearly see it's not just a level adjustment or a gain thing that's making you think like, oh, it's cutting through better. It's actually what this plugin is doing with saturating. You know, this is just one of many saturation plugins. You got tape plugins, you have just straight up saturators, you have clippers, different stuff like that. They'll all essentially do the same thing, but this is the one I'm using for this. I like it. I like putting you all on some free game as well. Bedroomproducersblog.com. You go get this plugin completely free. And it's, uh, it works great. So let's hear what it sounds like with it off so we can see that the gain is actually matched. This sample sounds pretty good even without the saturator plugin on it, but put it on and it's going to help cut through a phone. Um, if you all are listening on your phone now, you could probably hear the difference if I toggle it. And that's what we're doing. So on the kick, that's all we're doing right here. And then on the 808, which is the channel next to it, we're doing the same thing. Um, you can see here that we have the fruity limiter. Um, that's just to side chain it to this kick so that it ducks the 808 out. This is this will probably be on a later tutorial, but you can see here what it's doing. Just slightly ducking the 808 out so that whenever it hits, it's not two things hitting at the same time. It's actually letting the kick ring out a little bit more and then the 808 will come in. 
that'll be a later tutorial most likely. So let's go to the saturator. The same principles apply on the saturator that I'm using here is I balance the gain out the same. So it's not a gain thing. It's not a level thing. It's just what the saturator is doing. So let's hear it. Here it is without. With, without, you can see the gain is the exact same when the plugins on or off. All I did was adjust the out right here to make it match visually. One thing that helps with that side chain too is that this sample has like a kick in uh, within the sample, so that side chain is going to help reduce that down. But that's essentially it. We're going saturation on these low frequency instruments and samples, and we're just letting the saturation help it cut through a mix like this. I hope this helps. I hope this gives you a little clarity, puts you on some game as far as getting your low frequency stuff to cut through a mix on small speakers. You know, I've been doing this for a long time and this is one of the best ways that I found to help those low frequencies translate more on a phone. Um, hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this gives you some value and don't forget to go check out the industry standard production course, forwardproducer.com slash ISP and the link will be around here somewhere. Um, go check it out. Hopefully it helps you level up your production game. Um, until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.